Self-polishing glow coats present Bibber McGee and Molly, written by Don Quinn, with music by Billy Mills Orchestra, and featuring tonight a very special musical score written by Ken Darby, arranger and director of the King's Men. And the show opens with Who? <laughs> like a thermometer for measuring increased activity and hustle and bustle around the house, it would certainly kick over the traces in this week before Christmas. What with shopping and cooking and tree trimming and being an air raid warden besides, there's certainly lots to be done. But in spite of how busy you are, you still want your home to look its best for the holidays. Have you ever stopped to think how useful wax is at such a time? Truth is, if your floors, furniture, and woodwork have been regularly protected with genuine Johnson's wax, That special holiday cleaning can be done in short order. A quick dusting and polishing, a touch-up with wax where needed, and your rooms are glowing with mellow beauty, ready for the visits of your family and friends. For over 50 years, Johnson's Wax has helped brighten homes at the Christmas season. before Christmas, and all through the house at 79 Wistful Vista, not a creature was stirring, except Fibber McGee and Molly. McGee, I don't like to seem repetitious, but hadn't you better get your Christmas shopping done? Oh, Christmas shopping, Christmas shopping, Christmas shopping. Every year, the same thing makes me sick. Yes, I know, dearie. We go through this every year. What do you mean? You howl and scowl, and then the day before Christmas, the spirit hits you like a baseball bat. And you do everything but grow a beard and climb down chimneys. Well, gee whiz, Christmas is getting too commercial. It's getting so... Sure, sure. We ought to have rubber stamps made for this whole conversation. What do you mean again? <laughs> <laughs> well, every year you say Christmas is getting too commercial, and every year I have to scold you for spending too much. Who, me? Ha, ha, ha. I just spend what I have to to get by, that's all. I go along with the mob. It ain't any beautiful yuletide talks with me, baby. Oh, go on. No tinsel snow gets in my eyes. If I spend any dough, it's just because it's the easiest way out. Now, listen, McGee, you're a fraud. You're a phony. Uh, Why, you're so scared somebody will find out you're sentimental, you act like a dead end kid. <laughs> sentimental, my clavicle. <laughs> The whole thing is a lot of tapioca. I wouldn't give a half-hearted hoot and hat and sack if I never saw what you got there. <laughs> this is the mail that came this morning. It's mostly just Christmas cards. Let me see them. You wouldn't be interested. They're just the same old Christmas malarkey. What do you mean, malarkey? Don't you realize people have gone to a lot of time and trouble to... Was there any other mail? <laughs> just a couple of bills. Incidentally, what's this item on the Bontown bill for one mama doll, eight dollars and a half? Mama doll? Now, listen, don't try to look so innocent. Not that I mind you're playing with dolls, if they're made out of plaster. <laughs> but you certainly didn't buy this one for me, did you? No, I bought that for the little girl across the street. Oh, I think that's very sweet. It was not sweet. I'm giving it to the little pest as a bribe to stay out of my life. Oh. <laughs> it's strange how much she annoys you, isn't it? I never saw such a little nuisance. Always buttoning in where she ain't wanted. I know. You hate her so much that last year you gave her a two-dollar valentine. You gave her a white rabbit for Easter. Well, I... Took her to the circus twice. (laughs) Spent three days fixing her tricycle, and you did card tricks through her bedroom window when she had the mom. Well, that don't mean I like her, does it? Doesn't it? No. That was an old valentine that had been kicking around here for years. I gave her that rabbit because I thought it would annoy her old man. (laughs) 
I fixed her tricycle so she could go someplace else besides around here. <laughs> and I took her to the circus because they always give kids better seats than they do grown-ups, and I was taking advantage of her helpless condition to practice my car tricks. <laughs> And she never caught on. <laughs> well, I was doing it all for her. Uh, come off it, dear. You're not fooling anybody. I ain't trying to fool anybody. All I'm saying is that Christmas has lost its meaning. It's got so people don't... Come in. Hello, Mom. Hiya, Skimp. Well, if it ain't Billy Mills, the poor man's Toscanini. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Mills. Come on in, William, my boy. Hang your hat on a hickory limb and don't go near the piano. What's confusing with the music, kid? Just docked in to wish you a Merry Christmas. Ah, Merry Christmas, blah. What's merry about it? Walk your wedgies off in the slush to find a lot of junk for, for a few mugs that won't appreciate it. Hanging a ton of gee gaws on a pine tree that looked better in the woods. <laughs> Scratch your hands all up on a handful of holly to hang in the window so you can stick yourself in the eye with it when you look out to watch the mailman breaking his back with a sack full of silly Christmas cards. Merry Christmas, blah. And a happy new year. Well, thank you, Mr. Mills. The same to you. And don't pay any attention to McGee. You know, he goes through this act every year. He's got those don't wrap up that packet. Christmas is just a racket blues. Ah, <laughs> oh, don't worry, Mom. I can read him like a book. What kind of a book? He's a mystery. A very novel character. <laughs> Fine type, too. One of the lower cases. Somebody ought to borrow him and not bring him back. <laughs> Maybe we could arrange with the Book of the Month Club to offer him as a special premium. Oh, cut it out. Cut it out. Lay off, will you? Even if the rib was as prime as you think, this is a meatless day. <laughs> Ever play the bagpipes, Alfred? And don't call me Alfred. Okay, Joe. Ever play the bagpipes? I don't think he ever did, Mr. Mills. Do you think he could? Sure. Got a head start. Big bag of wind. <laughs> All he needs is a flute. Well, got to be gone. Merry Christmas again. Well, the same to you, Oskaloosa Souza. What's all the rush? Oh, I got to drop in and see my mother-in-law. She's A-W-O-L. Oh, you mean absent without leave? No, a welder out at Lockheed. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Wonderful band leader, McGee. Ah, band leader, my clavicle. <laughs> I think all of them are just a bunch of fakers myself. You ever see a musician looking at the leader? No. They don't know whether he's beating out a march, a polka, a waltz, or just swatting flies. <laughs> well, then what keeps them together? That check at the end of the week. <laughs> Confidentially, one of them guys told Oh, I wonder who that could be. Ah, probably somebody else coming in to wish us a Merry Christmas when all they really want to see is if you ever got those new curtains for the dining room. Well, I didn't, and the same to them. Come in. Hi, mister. Uh-oh. Now, this is all I needed today. Sis, why don't you take your little sled and go out on the pond in the park? Oh, there isn't any ice on it, mister. <laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> hey, don't be like that. You were young once yourself, you know. Oh, I wasn't that young this long. <laughs> be very tactful with him today, little girl. You know, his Christmas spirit is later than usual this year. Well, doggone it, the whole thing is a very foolish arrangement. Why, mister? Why the idea of having Christmas come right in the middle of the holidays? <laughs> Right when everybody is their busiest. It's ridiculous. Look, mister, I got business to see you about. Oh, yeah? Do you like to hear children sing Christmas carols? Hmm? Oh, sis, there's nothing I love more than to have a little group of childish voices stand outside my window and blap their melodious little brain. <laughs> Particularly if I ain't home that night. <laughs> I got my whole gang outside, and they're awful anxious to sing you a Christmas carol, and I told them... Well, I don't like to hear Christmas carols butchered by a bunch of kids. How can anybody sing good standing hip deep in a snowdrift with a muffler over their face, wondering how many fingers and toes they'll have left when they get home, if they ever do? Oh, maybe you're still mad on account of last year. Are you, mister? Are you? No, I'm not. That has nothing to do with it. What's this? What happened last year that I don't know about? Oh, nothing. She's well, just... us kids were going around singing Christmas carols. Now, never mind, sis. That, that's ancient and history. And Mr. McGee came now, out. Never mind. Now, never mind. Give the kid a cookie, Molly. I imagine she's kind of hungry. Hey, sis? Oh, gee, thanks, mister. Anyway, Mr. McGee came out while we were... Sis, I told you nobody was interested. Now, let's just drop the whole subject. 
What kind of a cookie you want? Any kind, thanks. And a glass of milk. Well, I'll see if I can <laughs> Now, listen, what happened with the Christmas carols, dear? Uh, and Mr. McGee came running out of the house. Now, you cut that out. And he I... wanted to sing with us only when we heard him sing. We didn't want him to, uh, and he followed us all over town. No. Gee, we couldn't get rid of him, and he kept trying to sing, and people threw things at us, and all that was awful. <laughs> 